first learned to play bridge when I was 11. My family spent a year in England and my parents discovered that they had some free time in the evenings. So they taught me and my brother to play bridge so that we could play bridge as a family. Uh, that wasn't exactly the same bridge that we play today or that's, that's been my life of bridge, but that was how I learned what bridge was about. My junior year I moved to Berkeley where there was a fairly active at that time bridge population and that was when I started playing serious bridge. I played my first duplicate bridge game in, in Berkeley and I've been, played a lot since then. Um, it's, it's, it's a game that catches you. You start playing and then you find out how interesting it is and how many millions of possibilities there are and I guess you can just never stop playing because there are always things to explore and things to learn about it. I can't tell you the hand at all but I know I still have remember the feeling. I was it was a I know the event it was a sectional board and match team game so you know how long ago it was because they don't have those anymore. I was playing with Pat Leary my first woman partner and it was a day when I just knew what I was doing. You know, things, things were all there for me. I was defending a hand, and I knew we couldn't beat it. And I thought, but what if I had the queen of diamonds? I know my partner has it. I know it's on side. I know we can't beat this hand. But what if I had it? What would I do? And I thought, well, if I had the queen of diamonds, I don't remember what it was I would do. And I'm sure it wasn't the queen of diamonds. But but I figured out how I would defend if I had the hand that could beat them. And I defended that way, and they trusted me, and they went down. <laughs> the whole rest of my life, I've wished I knew how to get yourself in that place where that's how you think. But I don't know. I don't know how to do it. Well, I'm lucky to have had many partners that I've been able to do well with and have enjoyed playing with. I, I suppose that my favorite partner is my husband um, and my favorite teacher. I, talking about bridge with Chip has, has taught me an enormous amount. I think I, I approach things differently because of the way that the discussions he and I have. Obviously my favorite moment in bridge was winning the Grand National Pairs with my husband. Uh, it was my first open win. Most of my national championships are women's events. I've I won my first national championship was the women's pairs in Vancouver in 19, I would say 74. Uh, I was playing with Pat Leary and we'd been playing for a while. We weren't terribly experienced. I had a two-year-old child at home so I wasn't spending a lot of time. But I went out to Vancouver to play in the women's pairs. and. At that time, even now, I'm not very good at estimating, but at that time I had no concept of how well we were doing or how badly we were doing. We played the last round against Helen Udegaard, who is from our area, from Sacramento at the time. And then we talked about the boards, like as you always do at the end of a, a session. And she, at the end of our discussion of all the boards, she said, you won. And we had no idea <laughs> that she was right, but she was. On the way home, I ran into Barry Crane in the airport, and he said to me, he said, do you know who won the women's? And I glowed, as I said I did. <laughs> and then he said, and how many points did you get for international qualification for winning that? And I cheerfully said seven, because of course I knew that. Then I got home and I said to Lou, I said, wasn't that interesting that he asked me about the international points and not about the master points? I had no idea how many master points I had won. And Lou said, well, he knew what was important to you. And I think that's, that's nice that bridge players know each other well enough to know how we think about things. I was thinking about how, how do you start doing things other than playing bridge that connect you to the bridge world. I've done a lot of things during my life. And I guess I first started because several of us of women bridge players saw some problems that confronted women specifically in the bridge world. 
And so we formed an organization, which I don't remember what it was called anymore. <laughs> it, was, it was the Women's Something or Other Committee. <laughs> And, and we would meet at nationals. It was at that time, it was pretty casual. Although I can remember a meeting where there were, as an entire ballroom filled with women. Uh, we talked about things like uh, childcare. At that time, there was no childcare at all. And Kitty Beta really, now Kitty Cooper, uh, took over and got that started. And then Donna Compton carried it on and has done an incredible job with creating child care that makes it so much easier for young people to be able to play at bridge tournaments. Uh, we also put a lot of effort into the details of the women's knockout, which was a relatively new event at that time. Things like seating points and how do you seat it and uh, what format how do you start the event, that kind of thing. When, when it's held, it used to be held in the spring nationals. And a lot of our women players particularly were school teachers who could really only attend the summer nationals. So we, we got it changed to the summer nationals. Uh, and then I was involved with both of my husbands with the team trials for the open teams and I got to thinking that the women ought to have a team trials also instead of their current selection mes method at the time, which was a very confused point method. You sort of never knew who was going to be on the team. So I, I'm, I'm pretty pushy, so I pushed and pushed and pushed, and we got a women's trials, and we now have a women's trials. Uh, and I've been involved with that since it began with figuring out what the format should be, figuring out how, how many teams should be allowed back then. It was just four, the four winners. Um, now it's anybody can enter the event, just as anybody can enter our open trials. Uh, and I, things just sort of grow. You, you see something that needs to be fixed, and you help fix it. And then the next time something needs to be done, somebody comes and asks you to do it. and and. That's how it happens. <laughs> so ViewGraph is another of those things where I s was unhappy that we weren't doing more ViewGraph from all events. I think I was actually already on the board of the United States Bridge Federation, and as such I was involved in running the team trials. So I had a fair amount of control there, and I said we should be doing ViewGraph from every single match, from the round of eight on, and nobody told me no, so I started doing that. Uh, so I got knowledgeable about how to do view graph and about the problems that arise and internet connections and things like that. And I was also a little unhappy that the ACBL wasn't covering the major events as completely as I thought it would be good to. I, I worked as an operator a lot, a ViewGraph operator a lot, and I had been doing the, the semifinals and the finals. I, you know, we used to do one match from each, or two tables from each of the semifinals and finals of the Vanderbilt and the Spin Gold, and I, I just thought we ought to be starting earlier. So once again, being a little pushy, I said to someone, I don't even remember who I pushed on at that point, I said, you know, if I get the operators, will you get me the equipment and the, the internet and the hands and all of that to do view graph starting earlier? And they said yes, and I've been doing it ever since. We need people who will step in and help us fix things.